Welcome to a lesson on graphing the cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions on the TI-84 in both degree and radian mode. Remember that the secant function and the cosine function are reciprocals of one another. So y equals secant x is equal to 1 divided by cosine x. And this is important because the graphing calculator does not have a special key for the secant function. And y equals cosecant x is equal to 1 divided by sine x. Again, this is important because the calculator does not have a cosecant function button. And then lastly, y equals cotangent x is equal to 1 divided by tangent x. So let's see if we can duplicate these graphs as well as make a table of values for each of these three functions. Let's first graph these in degree mode. So let's go ahead and press the mode key. So let's go down to row 3 and highlight degree. Press enter. And now let's go ahead and adjust the window and table set for degree mode. Let's press the window key. I'm going to graph these from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. So x min is negative 360. x max will be positive 360. Let's go ahead and scale this by increments of 15 degrees. Remember, all of these trig functions increase and decrease without bound. So let's select y min as negative 5 and y max as positive 5. Let's go ahead and change the table setup. Let's press second window. We're going to start at 0 degrees, and again, we'll have the change in the table be 15 degrees. We'll leave these on automatic. Now we're going to go ahead and press y equals. And let's start by graphing secant x. That's going to be the same as 1 divided by cosine x. Remember, these are reciprocals of one another. And it's often helpful to also graph cosine x in y2. But to make sure we know which function corresponds to which equation, let's go back up to y1, hit the left arrow all the way to the end, and let's press enter once. So the graph of secant x is going to be thick, and the graph of cosine x will be thin. Let's go ahead and press graph. There's the graph of y equals secant x. And there's the graph of y equals cosine x. One reason it's nice to graph these at the same time is remember that these two functions are reciprocals of one another. So where cosine is equal to 1 here, reciprocal of 1 is still 1, so secant will equal 1. And where cosine is equal to 1 half somewhere in here, the reciprocal would be 2, so secant is equal to 2, and so on. Now if we press second graph, remember y1 would be the secant function value, and y2 would be the cosine function value. And it's hard to tell in decimal form sometimes, but y1 and y2 are reciprocals of one another. For example, 2 is a reciprocal of 1 half, 1 is a reciprocal of 1, and where cosine is equal to 0, secant is undefined, meaning there's a vertical asymptote at 90 degrees. And so we could scroll up and down this table of values and plot specific points if we needed to. Let's go ahead and press y equals, and now let's go ahead and graph cosecant x. And that's going to be 1 divided by sine x. And let's go ahead and graph sine x in y2. We can go ahead and press graph, and we'll see a similar relationship. There's y equals cosecant x, and there's y equals sine x. So again, these function values are reciprocals. Now we can press trace to determine an angle and its corresponding function value, but the problem is the angles aren't given as nice values. But if we press second graph to access the table, because of the way we set up the table, these are all multiples of 15 degrees. And again, y1 and y2 would be reciprocals of one another, where y1 is the cosecant function value, and y2 is the sine function value for these given angles in degree mode. And then lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at y equals cotangent x. 
that will be expressed as 1 divided by tangent x. It's not quite as helpful to take a look at the graph of tangent x at the same time, but let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're more concerned about the thick graph. If we press graph, there's y equals cotangent x, and there's a graph of y equals tangent x. So it gets a little messy for this graph, so we may want to go ahead and turn off y equals tangent x. The way we do that is just press y equals, go over to the equal sign for y2 equals tangent x, and if we press enter, it's going to turn it off. It's still there, but, but notice the equal sign is not highlighted, so if we press graph, it'll only show y1. But if we do want to show both function values in the table, we do have to go back and turn tangent x back on. So let's go ahead and do that. So go over the equal sign, press enter. Now if we press second graph, there's a slight problem with the function values for cotangent x. Let's take a look at 90 degrees for a moment. We know the tangent function value is undefined at 90 degrees, but the cotangent function value should be zero. But remember we express this as one over tangent x. And since tangent x is undefined at 90 degrees, it's not giving us the correct value for cotangent x. This should be zero. Let's go ahead and look at that point on the graph. 90 degrees is right in here where the graph of tangent has a break as it approaches infinity, but the cotangent function value is actually zero. So there's a slight issue with the table of values for y equals cotangent x when we express it as one over tangent x. But other than where tangent x is undefined, all the other function values will be correct. Now if you want to graph these in radian mode, we just have to change the mode of the calculator and then change the window and the table set. So let's go down here and highlight radian. Press enter. Now let's go to our window and we'll change it from negative two pi to positive two pi. So negative two and then second, this exponent key here brings up the pi key. Now we press enter, it's going to convert this to a decimal, which is one of the disadvantages of the radian mode. And we'll press in 2 pi for the x max. Enter. We can leave everything else the same. Let's go ahead and press second window. We'll start at zero radians. Let's have the change of table be, well, 15 degrees would be pi divided by 12 radians. Or we could use 3 degrees, which would be pi divided by 6. Let's go ahead and use pi divided by 6 this time. Press enter, and now if we go back to our graph, it'll look identical to the graph that we just saw, except now everything is measured in radians, and we'll see that when we go to the table of values. So again, we have the dark graph is y equals cotangent x, and the thin graph is y equals tangent x. So one of the disadvantages of the radian mode is that the radians are always expressed as a decimal approximation, not with pi, so it's a little more difficult to determine exactly which angle we're referring to here in the x column. So the most important thing to remember when we're graphing in radian mode, we have to change the mode, change the window, and change the table set. Let's go ahead and check the graph of y equals secant x. Remember that's one over cosine x. And then we'll also graph cosine x. Press graph. And again, it appears exactly the same graphically as it did in degree mode. But of course, if we were sketching this on our paper, we'd have to change the way we labeled the x-axis. But other than that, the graph would be exactly the same, as well as the function values for the angles expressed in radians. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful.